here's a look at chaga. Inonotus obliquus is the Latin name. This is on either a silver or yellow birch tree. Notice the lenticels. Uh, these are the uh, breathing holes of the birch trees. They all have that. Very important identifying characteristic, but don't be fooled by cherry trees, which they actually have uh, broken up bark. Birch has often peeling bark. Uh, does have the lenticels, but the bark peels. Uh, this is a great tinder. This is extremely flammable. Notice I can harvest if I'm careful without damaging the tree. I can take this and use it as a tinder for fire starting. It's beautiful. It contains a substance called betulin, which is actually flammable uh, even when moist or wet. So very good fire starter. There are many things that look like crazy chaga growths, but the one thing about this is notice how there's the red on the inside. It's very significant. So the burnt outer side and then the red inside. This is actually not a mushroom. It's a, I think it's a sclerotia which is actually like a mass. Uh, there are many kinds of mushrooms that produce a sclerotia. Uh, often underground, a mycelial sclerotia is almost like a tumor. It's very interesting. Um, so actually, if we look at this tree, and we look at through our perspective, we might say, hey, this is a tree tumor. It's very unique. Uh, it's a growth on the tree, but it's actually interesting because this tree contains salicylic acid and a lot of other compounds um, which are greatly for anti-inflammatory and other things. And this growth actually pulls that and concentrates those medicinal substances within its body. So it's actually very interesting because if we take the signature of the cancer, how do we have this sort of inside out practice where uh, the thing that is a growth of cancer on a tree, we drink and of course we know that chaga is a profound cancer treatment. It's very important to be an ethical harvester of chaga. This is not a spore-bearing cluster, so actually the sclerotia falls to the ground at one phase in its life, and that's when it's spreadable. So, um, you know, the question is not how long does the tree take to harbor chaga. Really the question is how long does the forest take to grow trees that actually can harbor chaga. And so don't forget, it's very easy to cut this ecosystem down in a few hours, and yet it may have taken 50 to 100,000 years to get the forest into a situation where chaga can even grow. So we definitely want to consider ethical chaga harvesting, uh, just like when we work with any plant. So we can actually take chaga, a little chunk about that big, uh, put it in a coffee grinder, grind it up, make sure that it's a powder, uh, put it in about two to four cups of water, simmer it down maybe for five to 30 minutes, people say different things, and you can actually drink that down for a really profound immunomodulating medicinal mushroom. Well, thanks for watching the video and uh, hopefully I'll find some more. Check out returntonature.us for upcoming classes, lots of videos, and also articles on foraging, herbalism, wild crafting and uh, the philosophy of uniting with the ecosystem. Much love.